Hello folks, this is Rev Bari, Brown University physics grad student. Welcome to the next episode of the Physics GRE lecture series. Today we're taking a look at another classical mechanics problem, so let's go ahead and take a look. So here's the problem. We have a big box of mass capital M and a smaller box of mass lowercase m, and they're sitting on a table, and we push the bottom box with an applied force F. And the question is, what does the coefficient of friction between the two blocks have to be so that the first box on top, the box on top, does not slip off the box on the bottom? So here's the question. Here's the question. What does the coefficient of friction, mu, have to be so that the top block, m, have to be so m does not slip, does not slip? Okay, so that's the question. So let's go ahead and try to analyze this problem. So I'm going to solve this problem in two different ways, okay? The first way is going to be a little heuristic. It's uh, not going to involve that many free body diagrams, but it's going to get us to the answer faster. The second method is more foolproof. We're going to draw free body diagrams for both of the boxes and achieve the same answer, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this system. Okay, so first, Let's try the first method. So if I look at this system, what's happening? Well, I see an external force, F, and I see a system that has a total mass of capital M plus lowercase m, right? If these two boxes stay together, then, I mean, there's no differentiating between the large box and the small box, right, if they're stuck together, right? So we can essentially treat any internal forces as, non as negligible. We don't have to account for internal forces. The only external force that we have to account for is this applied force F. So if I just write down Newton's second law, F equals MA, then the net force is just this applied force. The total mass is going to be the sum of the two boxes times the acceleration. So the acceleration of the system is the applied force divided by the total mass. Okay, but this is not what we're looking for, is it? We're not just looking for the acceleration of the system, we're looking for the coefficient of friction between the two boxes so that the top box does not slip off the bottom one. How do we do that? Well, the next thing we can do is look at the top box. Let's look at the top box and take a look at some of the forces acting on it. We've certainly got gravity, right? Because any object in the gravitational field experiences a gravitational force. We also have a normal force that's pushing up. And how much does this normal force have to be? Well, clearly, this top box is not floating off the bottom one, so it has to be equal in magnitude for the normal force, uh, so that the top box is in static equilibrium vertically. What else do we have? Are there any other forces? There is, right? Because there's a coefficient of friction between the two boxes, there has to be friction acting on this box. But what is the direction of friction? This confuses many students. It turns out the direction of friction is in the direction of the applied external force. Okay, this is the direction of the friction on the top block. Why is that? Well, think about it. There's only one force in the horizontal direction acting on the top box. So there's only one thing that can make the top box move in the same direction as the applied force. And we know it has to move in the same direction as the applied force because that's what we see, right? If, if I have, for example, this eraser and I have this marker, I know that if I push the marker, sorry, if I push the eraser, I'm not physically pushing the marker, but the marker is still moving with the eraser. Why is that? Because there's a force of friction between the surface of the marker and the surface of the eraser, and that friction moves the marker along. It communicates the external force applied on the eraser to the marker. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, what is our force of friction here? Well, that's just mu mg. Right? It's just mu Fn and Fn is mg. So the condition, the condition for the top block to not slip off the bottom block is that this force of friction has to supply at least as much acceleration as, as the whole system is accelerating at. Let me say that one more time. The condition for the top block to not slip off the bottom block is that the force of friction supplied to the top block has to give the same amount of acceleration as the system's acceleration. 
if the force of friction can no longer keep up if this force of friction is gives the top block a less a smaller acceleration than this much then the top block is going to start slipping it's going to start falling off what's going to happen is that initially here is both here are both of the blocks moving right uh, i shouldn't draw an arrow there that's not being pushed so both of the blocks are moving let's say okay but then if the top block starts slipping then it's going to start falling off and falling off like this okay until it eventually falls off the top off the bottom block and hits the ground okay so that's the picture so this is what happens if the external force is too high or if the coefficient of friction between the two blocks is too low if the force of friction does not give the top block a sufficient acceleration to keep up with the system acceleration then there's no hope the top block is going to slip and it's going to get uh it's going to be pushed off the bottom block and it's going to fall to the ground as so okay so that is our picture so the criterion for no slipping for the top block is that the force of friction which is mu mg this must supply the top block the same acceleration as the system okay so how can i find out the acceleration associated with this well just write down newton's second law for the top block so net force is m a okay and so now what do we have here let's see so the net force here is just going to be mu mg mu mg equals m a okay and of course we know that mass cancels out from both sides so we have mu g is equal to a let's write that here mu g equals a the acceleration but we know what the acceleration is it's f over m plus m so that means the coefficient of friction between the two blocks must be mu is equal to f divided by the sum of the masses times g okay and you can also see that this has the right units for mu mu is unitless so the top and bottom have to have the same units and indeed force and mass times gravity do both have units of newtons okay so that is our answer the coefficient of friction must be the external force divided by the sum of the masses times gravity okay so that is method one for getting this answer now let's take a look at method number two okay what is method number two we're going to draw the free body diagram for the both of the boxes not just the top one now we're going to analyze both of the boxes as follows okay so here we go let's first draw the free body diagram for the top block since that's easier so the top block has a mass m it has gravity acting down on it a normal force of equal magnitude acting up on it it has a force of friction carrying it forwards which is equal to mu mg and that's it these are all the three forces which are acting on the top block now let's repeat the same analysis for the bottom block so here is our bottom block if now this should be capital m not lowercase so for the bottom block we also have gravity of course but remember for the bottom block we have both the top block and the bottom blocks mass right because the bottom block has is supporting the weight of the top one as well so gravity is going to include both of their masses here okay we also have some kind of a normal force acting up on this uh, block which must be of equal magnitude because the block is not floating away or anything okay now let's think about what other forces there are certainly there's the external force applied on the bottom block but there is another force that many students miss out on and that is the force of friction even though the table itself has no friction table does not have friction even though the table is frictionless there is a friction between the two boxes right so friction is a newton's third law force pair there's a force of friction that's acting to the right on the top block so there must be a force of friction acting to the left on the bottom block okay and of course this force of friction must be of equal magnitude as the one acting on the top block so this force of friction is also mu mg mu mg okay so now let's write down the net force in the horizontal direction for the bottom block that's going to be the external force minus the force of friction 
So f minus mu mg. And now there's one more thing. We know what the acceleration of the bottom block is, right? This is simply equal to capital M A. If I solve for the acceleration, that's going to be one over capital M times F minus mu mg. Now this is all fine, but the acceleration of the bottom block must equal the acceleration supplied by the force of friction on the top block, right? If they are to move together. So this is the acceleration of the bottom block, but we already know the acceleration of the top block. What is that? So if I look at the top block here, the only force acting in the horizontal direction is the force of friction, mu mg. And that's equal to lowercase ma, right? Because we're dealing with the smaller block. Canceling out the m's, I get that the acceleration must be mu g for the top block. But if the two blocks are to move together, the acceleration of the top block and the acceleration of the bottom block must agree. They must be the same. So that means, coming over here, I can say that the acceleration of the top block, mu g, must equal the acceleration of the bottom block, 1 over m, capital M, times the external force minus mu mg. So this is going to, if I just solve for mu, let's go ahead and isolate mu here on both sides. So this is going to be capital F over m minus mu m over mg, the ratio of the two masses. Let's take out this table is not equal to friction. And let's factor out mu from both sides. So this is g plus m over mg is equal to F over capital M. And so now, if I just solve for mu, let's see what I get. So mu factor out g as well. This will give us 1 plus the ratio of the masses. It is the external force over the large mass. And so that means mu is equal to F over M times, let's see, what is this? This is 1 over g times 1 plus the ratio of the masses. Okay, great. So that is it. So that means the coefficient of friction is equal to, now let's just distribute this through. It's F divided by mg plus, uh, let's see, is my, I think, I'm afraid my masses might be flipped here. Yep, so I made a mistake here. The lowercase mass should be on top. So there you go. I detected that mistake because I realized this does not reproduce our original answer, which it should. So now we have our original answer back. So we found that the coefficient of friction, once again, must equal the external force divided by the sum of the two masses times gravity if the two blocks are to stay together without slipping. So that's how you solve this problem, physics theory problem, in two different ways. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and hopefully you enjoyed.